Yo, yo, it's your boss, Sopador! <laughs> before we get into today's episode, which is going to be absolutely crazy, I want you to go ahead and destroy that like button, because you're going to like this episode. You don't even need to watch it. Just hit the like button, comment, subscribe. If this is your first impression of me and I sound kind of obnoxious, go ahead and subscribe anyway, because that way you can get all my Twitch announcements and the vlogs of why I haven't created videos in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, a big shout out to our sponsor, LegalGameGold.com. Need gold for your MMO choice? Want to stick it to the game company you love for creating a game that you enjoy by completely destroying their in-game economy by encouraging highly overinflated prices while simultaneously creating a highly uncompetitive market for other players? Which you feed back into because you're now having to pay the overinflated prices requiring people to buy more gold, allowing them to create their own market? And then check out LegalGameGold.com for all your currency needs. For a limited time only, you can get 5% extra gold by spending $383.72 or more by using the promo code PRESIDENT FOREVER. That's right, PRESIDENT FOREVER. LegalGameGold.com saves you time and money by having to avoid needlessly grinding or supporting developers through subscription-based services or unethical microtransactions. LegalGameGold.com is also known for having the best support through one of their fake bots that have to distract you while they get the one English speaking person on their staff to tell you that they're currently working on their order. Now all you gotta do is sit back, enjoy the show, and listen to the top 10 YouTubers that I absolutely hate. Everybody, as it should have, so if you're a fan oh ye gods, series, my April Fool's video is ruined! But... But today, we're doing something very exciting. Uh, you've seen in previous episodes of Brutal Foods, my master. What if I took someone art. else's video idea and disguised it as I my own? Advanced techniques. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's so delightfully devilish, Sober. So today... Hello, I'm Soberdorf. You might know me from my YouTube series Design Documentaries or Building Character, where I discuss video game design and storytelling. And video games are very popular. Over 150 million Americans are said to play video games. That's nearly half of the adult population. But in today's increasingly divided world with controversial opinions and how any statement can be seen as an attack, I realize that by exclusively talking about video games, I'm leaving a lot of people out of the conversation. However, recent studies show that at least 100% of the people currently alive today use food as nourishment. So as an effort to be as inclusive as possible, I decided that from today onward, I'm going to be doing a cooking show. That's right, this is Sober Cooked, an in-depth analysis on food design and narrative. And today we're going to be cooking one of my favorite dishes. This is Soberdorf Soul Melter Chili. Chili, or chili con carne as it's officially known, is a dish that is typically consisting of meat and peppers that are stewed. And that's about all people can agree on. But chili has seen so many variations that it can contain any mix of ingredients, including, but not limited to, beans, tomatoes, beef, chicken, pork, venison, lamb, celery, olives, even chocolate or soda. From your original Texan-style chili, to the less common Green Verde chili, or white chili, to the abomination we have in Ohio known as Cincinnati chili. It ranks up there among pizza of one of the more customizable dishes, and is probably just as divisive. The origin of chili con carne is fairly obscured by history. Some place it as a dish of Mexican origin. Others claim it was a Texan dish made by the poor or for prisoner food. Some accounts even state that a Spanish nun who went by the name Mary of Agreda had astral projected to Indians and learned the recipe from them. And no, I didn't make that up. Regardless of its origin, it rose in popularity sometime in the 19th century and has become a food staple to this very day, served in a large variety of restaurants and being a common dish for cook-offs. The origin of Soberdorf Soul Melter Chili is known, however. Growing up, I was never a big fan of spicy foods, but one of my favorite dishes was always my mom's chili. However, it wasn't really that great. Sorry, mom. 
It was basically tomato juice with hamburger and beans. It was catered to my dad's hatred of anything green and my mom's inability to handle spice. Then one day, I ordered chili at a restaurant and it was amazing. It was so thick with meat and vegetables that I could eat it with a fork and it tasted really good. But with that taste came a heat I wasn't familiar with and it turned out I really enjoyed it to the extent that I couldn't go back to watery chili. I started experimenting on my own version, trying to replicate what I had before. However, the birth of Soul Melter Chili came from all things a sinus infection. One year I had the flu that evolved into a severe sinus infection that lasted for, and I'm not kidding, months. And it really didn't matter what I took for it. Desperate for a solution, I realized that you couldn't have a sinus infection if you didn't have a sinus. So I made the spiciest bowl of chili I could possibly make. Our local grocer just started carrying orange habanero peppers, and back then those were considered extreme, but I loaded up on those, as well as jalapenos and serranos, threw it all into a pot with some beans and hamburger, and ate it throughout the next couple of days. Needless to say, I didn't have a sinus infection anymore. But to my surprise, it was genuinely amazing. Beyond the spice, it was a mixture of ingredients that gave the entire dish such a palette of different taste. A savory, sweet, yet incredibly spicy taste that built and lingers, that left my stomach feeling like it was nesting warm coals of delicious food in my stomach. So I kept refining it, adding and adjusting until I made what I considered to be the best bowl of chili in the world. Then the Fire Nation attacked. Salsa was usually a staple in my dish, but it was usually just hot salsa that you would get for chips. But I had stumbled onto a few brands that were designed with the spice in mind, including one that used ghost peppers. Now, ghost peppers were always a thing that my friends joked about including in my chili, and at the time it was one of the hottest peppers on earth. From what I remember being told, you had to have a license to use them, though I don't know if that was actually true. However, here it was. I wasn't even planning on making chili, but I had to try it. It's our human nature to push our boundaries just to see how far we can go, even if it means the destruction of our own bodies, even the world. And it was amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was barely edible. I could not have more than a few bites without having to reach for a glass of milk, but I could also not stop eating it. It was so good. I was a masochist. My entire mouth was screaming in pain like a proverbial dominatrix spilling hot wax of capsaicin all over my taste buds. One time there was a potluck at work and we each had to bring something. And it was there I realized I was also a sadist. Watching people take a small bite of the chili just to see their face flush and make them run to a drink of soda, realizing there was no saving their souls. And I got to take most of it home as leftovers because people avoided the soup of the devil. It was perfect. Alright, so before we get started, I'm going to let you know what you're going to need to make this Soul Melter Chili. First, we're going to need a clean area. Alright, now that we got a clean area, here's a few things you're going to need to actually cook the chili. First of all, you're going to need a place to cook. I'm currently doing this in my bedroom uh, because I don't have it anywhere. I would actually recommend you do a proper cooking area such as a kitchen and or a kitchen. Uh, but because of that, we are making doubly sure we're going to have a fire extinguisher. In worst case scenario, I have named this one Chekhov. Put that right there. We will be prepping meat, so we're gonna need a skillet with a, right here I got a portable stove. And because we're lazy, I'm actually going to, instead of cook this over a stove top, be using a crock pot. Now because we are prepping food in two different ways, both the skillet and the crock pot, you can essentially do one of these two steps in any order. If you prefer to cook your meat first, that's fine. I actually prefer to put the stuff in a crock pot first. It makes it just simple. You can let it cook while you're dealing with the meat. Cuts down on the cooking time maybe by half an hour. Not a big deal, considering we'll be letting this cook usually overnight, but might as well go ahead and get started with a crock pot. All right, so now we got our stuff ready for throw in a crock pot. Let's go over what we're going to be doing here. 
The reason I use a crockpot is because, um, as I said before, I'm lazy. I don't want to sit there over a stove and have to watch it. I want something I can just throw stuff in and forget. And when I sleep, I know it's cooking. And when I wake up, I know I'm going to be in the most exquisite pain that I can be. So, uh, what we're going to have here, because this is chili, what well, we have a pepper stir fry mix. What this contains is green peppers, yellow peppers, red peppers, and sliced onions. Now you could go ahead and buy all these ingredients separately. If you want the freshest chili, I would actually recommend that. But again, we're lazy, so we're just going to go ahead and use this bag and throw it in there. Let's talk about bell peppers for a second. Bell peppers aren't actually a pepper in the traditional sense, and they share more in common as a fruit, though most people think of them as a vegetable. And it's one of the few peppers that don't produce capsaicin, the chemical that makes peppers spicy. However, they are very tasty, aromic, and a great source of vitamin C. They come in a variety of colors, green, red, yellow, and orange being the most common, and they're usually somewhat sweet and crisp. It's used in the chili to give it a pepper-like texture because, believe it or not, this is the closest thing to a whole pepper that we use. Alright, now that we got the stir-fry mix in there, we're going to go ahead and be adding the foundation to what I consider the chili, chili beans. Now, for some, that's a very controversial statement. You don't add beans in chili. However, because this is meant for more of a social gathering, and I don't want to just buy a bunch of meat to make sure I have enough, a pot big enough for everyone, I'm going to go ahead and use beans. These are Brooks Hot Chili Beans. They're beans that are kind of soaked in a hot sauce. Uh, you, nice thing about these, rather than just buying kidney beans, which are kind of in a, like, just... Uh, oil mix that I typically drain these are usually good enough you can just throw right in there and I am perfectly fine with just having stuff I can throw right in so let's go ahead beans and chili as I mentioned is a bit of a controversial opinion and it's basically the equivalent to pizza on pineapple or pineapple on pizza beans and chili is typically a northern sentiment while south especially Texas adding beans to chili is considered a blasphemy Regarding on where I stand on the matter, I personally prefer my chili without beans. However, I don't consider beans a blasphemous act, and it makes for a good filler. Making a large pot of chili for a group of people gets a little cost prohibitive when you start to add a lot of meat. Another option if you prefer is to use rice, but really just make it how you want. This recipe doesn't live or die by the inclusion of beans. And it's already starting to look like chili. However, it's not just going to be peppers and beans. We're going to make this the best tasting chili we can. We're going to aim for a savoriness in the beans with a kind of sweetness with the green peppers, but we're also going to be adding some diced tomatoes. Now, diced tomatoes are by itself fine, but we want a little bit more of a kick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in these diced tomato with pepper mix and we got two here we got one with habanero and we got another that is a chipotle diced tomatoes with green chilies and chipotle peppers now because these are tomatoes they're going to add a certain sweetness to the chili but with the peppers that are in there it's also going to be where a decent portion of our spiciness is going to come from Tomatoes themselves are a controversial pick as an ingredient, though nowhere near as much as beans are. Their inclusion is designed to add a sweetness to the chili similar to using the green peppers, but the real stars of the show is the diced peppers included in a can. Unlike bell peppers, these peppers have capsaicin, which is what gives chili its heat. The weakest of the two here is the chipotle and the green chili, which is really just a variant of the more familiar jalapeno which on a Scoville scale ranks anywhere from 2,500 to 8,000. And if you don't know what the Scoville scale is, you can think of it as like the Dragon Ball Z power level scale for peppers. The habanero, on the other hand, is far spicier, ranking upwards of 150,000 to 325,000. Habaneros are actually one of my favorite peppers, because despite their heat, they're some of the best tasting peppers by far. 
It has a strong taste of what I would describe as a citrus. It's not overly sweet, but it has a lot of flavor. And because of that, it goes pretty well with practically any dish and mixes exceptionally well with things like jams. All right, now that we got the diced tomatoes in there, that's gonna add a certain sweetness and the peppers that are in there should be adding a bit of a spice to it. So I kind of want to also add a good, like, tangy, smoky flavor to it without being a little overpowering. So we're going to go ahead and add just a small can of this chipotle salsa to the mix. That'll give us a nice aromic taste to it. And we don't even have to do a whole lot. We just pull this open. Make a mess everywhere, that's great. Chipotles, as I said before, are basically a slight variant of the jalapeno. However, the reason I prefer the chipotles over the jalapeno is because of their flavor. With bell peppers and tomatoes, we have a bit of sweetness. And with the habanero, we have a hint of citrus. Chipotles are bold and smoky and earthy, similar to a barbecue sauce without the sweetness added by brown sugar. Normally, I mix two cans of habanero tomatoes with two cans of the salsa, but that usually ends up being a little too potent, so I'm experimenting with this mix here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sober, you called this soul melter chili. How is it gonna melt my soul with habaneros and green chilies? That's not soul melting. Trust me. What's coming next is going to melt your soul and other parts of your body that I cannot mention on a PG-13 video. What we have here is Mrs. Refro's Ghost Pepper Salsa. Oh man, the ghost pepper. I'm not gonna lie, the salsa itself is barely edible, even for me. Going back to our Dragon Ball power levels, let's say an average jalapeno is somewhere around Goku at the beginning of his training and 100 times Earth's gravity. A habanero would be Goku as he hits Super Saiyan for the first time. That would put the Ghost Pepper anywhere between Goku's power level when he fought Cooler or Yajirobe in his resting state. You know, the more I think about the more the power levels in Dragon Ball Z don't really make any sense. Seriously though, the Ghost Pepper is three times more potent than the Habanero. Yeah, I know, there are hotter peppers out there like the Carolina Reaper, but the Ghost Pepper is no joke and is about as strong as I'm willing to handle. So why do I put it in there? Simply put, the spice must flow. This salsa is what gives chili its heat. I actually prefer handling it in its salsa form because actually handling Ghost Peppers is legitimately dangerous and it's easier to get a mixture of the heat throughout rather than having pockets. I would definitely go light with it if it's your first time. All right, so we got most of the foundation of this chili done. We got beans, we got peppers, we got diced tomatoes, and we got a bunch of salsa. Now, if we eat this just as is, and you can, if you don't want any meat, this is kind of your stopping point. You don't have to go ahead and cook the meat that we're gonna cook, but as of right now, this is going to be a very sweet and spicy chili. Mainly because of the salsa. The salsa and the tomatoes are going to be adding a bunch of sweetness. We got a lot of spice from the habaneros, the ch green chilies, the chipotles, and of course the ghost peppers. Uh, but chili isn't necessarily supposed to be sweet. It's supposed to be good enough, sweet enough that you can enjoy it, but we really need to bolden this up a bit. So we're going to go ahead and add a bit of sauces to kind of correct the taste. The first one we're going to add is chili garlic sauce. This stuff is really good. I, I basically use this in any dish I make. We're going to be adding some sriracha. Sriracha is a hot sauce that is kind of a savory pepper. Uh, a little bit on the sweet side, but not especially so. And, of course, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and blaspheme this. We're gonna be adding some jalapeno ketchup. Now, ketchup and chili, that sounds disgusting, right? Well, this, uh, this ketchup in particular, especially, Heinz is a little bit on the sweet side, but this is kind of a bold, spicy ketchup that I really like to use. Now I'm actually doing this a little bit out of order for demonstration purposes. 
Typically, I add sauce to taste rather than during the cooking process, but it was a good way to demonstrate what I use. Sriracha is added to make the chili a bit more tangy and bold. Chili garlic is added for a more flavorful heat. And ketchup is if I end up going overboard with the two and dilute it with sweetness. Ideally, you only need a small squirt with each, about what I show here. But essentially, you can use any sort of sauce to flavor it how you want. Alright, now that we got our base done, uh, this is going to be cooking while we prepare the meat. Now, for me, we are going to be going ahead and using two different kinds of meat for this chili. The first kind of meat we're going to be doing is some stew beef. Stew beef, as you can probably guess for the name, typically used in stew. However, I like to use it in my chili as well. Now you might be asking, why use stew beef? Why don't you use like ground chuck or even ground sirloin? Well, the reason for that is simple. Soul Melter Chili is a experience. And it's not an experience that you want to be over quickly. The reason why you use thicker cuts of meat like stew beef is because it forces the person who's eating the Soul Melter Chili to have to chew the meat. While they're chewing the meat, that heat is just building up and soaking in their mouth, so they can't just like with hamburger, you can just chew it quickly, swallow, and get it done. This, on the other hand, forces you to savor it. Beef and chili go hand in hand, and really, stew meat isn't even all that uncommon in chili, because chili itself is basically a stew. But the reason I use it is intentional to force people to actually chew the chili and savor the flavor. It doesn't really matter if you overcook it too much because you'll be cooking the chili for around 8 hours and by then the meat's already going to be well done. I just prefer to leave some of the juices so it can cook in the chili and give it an overall beefy flavor. Because of that, don't be afraid to get something that's low quality or close to its sell-by date because you won't really notice. During the cooking process, I usually try to season the meat with dry spices to add a bit more flavor to the chunks. Here I use a chili powder mix with some of the garlic chili sauce, but you can flavor it however you want. It's not a huge deal concerning the chili will most likely overpower it, but it never hurts to add. Now, as you might have remembered, I said we're going to be adding two different kinds of meat. Now, we got stew meat. Uh, that is really where a lot of the bold, steaky flavor of the chili is going to come from. But it's... Two pounds for a group of five people isn't going to be enough to go around. Only a few people are going to get really good chunks of meat, especially if they try to fish them out. So what we need is kind of like a filler meat. And for that, we actually got what looks like to be three pounds more of chicken boneless, skinless breast with rib meat. Now... I got this on sale, uh, it was only about $5 for 3 pounds, which is really good. Uh, it's probably not the best quality of breast meat, but it's actually still better than like something like thigh meat. Now, with chicken, uh, the reason I cooked the beef first is because beef is usually alright. Chicken is going to actually require a little bit more prep. so. Chicken is a bit of a pain to prep and cook, and it personally doesn't add as much flavor as stew beef. But chicken is definitely a heck of a lot cheaper. This chicken breast I got was only $1.79 a pound. And this pot of chili is already pushing around 30 bucks, so you have to save where you can. And chicken isn't a bad addition, and it's technically better for you. The one thing I do like about it is that it tends to soak up the flavor better. If you aren't pressed for time, there's definitely things you can do to make it taste better. One thing I would recommend is marinating it in a teriyaki sriracha sauce. But alas, I got this chicken frozen, so I didn't really have that chance. It was the day I was going to cook it. However, if money is no object, I highly, highly recommend adding lamb as well. Lamb meat explodes with flavor, and it fits the chili exceptionally well. Unfortunately, lamb is almost always out of my price range. And if I'm going to use lamb, trust me, I'm not going to give it to other people. Sanitation is a very important step when you're cooking from your room, since it's most likely not going to be as clean as a kitchen. I normally cook meals from this table, as well as occasionally use it for a board game. 
so I definitely don't want a foodborne illness surprising me during a game of L5R. Alright, so we got all the meat cooked, and it is, as you can see, in the chili. Uh, just need to stir it up a bit. Didn't grab another ladle, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and wash that. But, just wanna make sure the meat is in the chili so it can soak up all the chili juices. Like so. Instead, I'll mix up a little bit better once I go ahead and wash that. But yeah, just like that, uh, the chili is basically done. Uh, well, not edible yet, but it is done to the point where we don't have to cook anymore. So, usually, uh, depending, I like to slow cook my chili for about four to six hours before I refrigerate it. It's the thing I'm having is tomorrow, so I'm cooking this at like two in the morning. So by the time I go to bed, I'll turn it off, put it up, and then it will be ready to go. All right, it is now the dawn of the second day. Our chili has been cooking for about 10 hours. Funny thing is, is uh, right around the time I went to bed, I didn't want to leave the crock pot overnight because it was kind of on its end of the cooking. I didn't want to overcook it. So I ended up turning off the crock pot and put it in my tall, tiny mini fridge thinking that would cool it down. Turns out my mini fridge is more insulated than I thought. It actually was warm to the touch when I pulled it out. So uh, not a big deal though. But it is done for the most part. We still got to do a couple more things. Uh, there is kind of a small issue. Here is the chili and it's close to final form. I mean, as you can tell, it is nice. It has a lot in there. The only problem is this chili, at least for me, is a bit too watery. I typically like chili that you can eat with a fork, so, which is weird because I did not add any tomato base to this. Like, I usually have to add, if I can pull it out of here, I usually use this as a base. Unfortunately, it, or fortunately, I guess I should say, it didn't really need it, but. We still got a bunch of watery chili, so uh, I'm going to teach you how to fix this. Now, typically people would use something like flour or cornstarch to thicken it up. However, I kind of prefer something a little different. We're going to use tortilla chips, uh, specifically the no salt added kind, because I don't want to over salt this. And Pretty simple, all we do is essentially grab a handful, like so, and we just crush them up. Spread the crumbs. Now, I prefer this over flour because I feel like this adds more of a taste to it. Then, after we do that, we just stir it in. And it's going to be noticeable. Like, you can crush it up more like put it in a plastic bag and just beat it with a rolling pin or something until it's like a powder. Uh, that's the same effect. I'm just doing it by hand because this isn't meant to be a something we slave over. This is just kind of a solution. So, all right. And for the most part, our chili is done. It is ready to be consumed. One more thing though, our toppings. Like, 
you can always add a little extra to the chili. And we have a few options that I typically like to use. Of course, there's sour cream. Uh, we have chili and soup crackers. You really can't go wrong with those. Those are a steady popper. Uh, of course, we have cheese. Cheese is good. Funny thing is, uh, I might have to pick up some more cheese because when I put this in the fridge, or when I put the chili in the fridge, I also had the cheese in there on the bottom shelf. And it actually got so warm that uh, this is easy melt cheese, but it ended up melting the cheese. So uh, I guess just something to be careful. Uh, one of my favorites, though, to add to this are French's toppers. These are mainly for, like, casseroles and such. However, I genuinely think these are good. As you can tell, I have some jalapeno toppers. They go excellent with it. So, this is about, this is ready to be consumed. The only thing is, we might want to test it before everyone else gets to try. Make sure it's tasting well, see if we need to adjust anything. And let's go ahead and just make a bowl of it. All right. This is our chili, sober soul melter chili. Just kind of show it off a little bit. I added the toppings. Uh, little, went a little heavy on it just to be sure. Actually, the cheese kind of went heavy, so I don't want to eat too much of this because we're having our gaming thing today, and I want to make sure I can eat it there. So. Go ahead and grab a spoonful of this. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. That is, that is great. Now, as I said uh, before, with the video, I decided to make sure that, usually I'll make it it's two cans of salsa, two cans of diced habaneros. But that always ended up being a little too potent. So, I want this mix, and wow. Oh wow. It's definitely chili. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Mm. It's definitely very earthy. It's not as sweet as I thought it would be. Uh, it tastes... It's very smoky, but it still has a sweetness. And that heat's starting to build up. Jeez. Oh. Well, I'm just going to finish this bowl before I start hogging. I can't even think. Actually, really surprising. The chicken itself is really tender. Uh, normally, the chicken, it's a little bit tougher, but uh, it, it's basically falling apart in my mouth. Uh, let's see if the beef, how the beef is. Oh, beef is pretty tender too. Uh, I think I cooked it just right where uh, it's still had enough to where it could fall apart as I cooked in a chili. So. Mmm. Oh. It is, it is a bit spicy though. Just a tad. So our chili is done, and it is good. It is spicy. I can, uh, it is very spicy. But it isn't really that bad. Uh, I don't know if it's because I added a lot of cheese to my bowl, but the ghost pepper wasn't, I'm still feeling it, but it wasn't overpowering. It was a very slow buildup. I was halfway through the bowl before it really started hitting me. So... It tastes good. It tastes amazing. Uh, I would try to maybe add a little bit more sweetness. I might do that. Uh, but actually, I might just keep it as is because it is bold. Uh, 
it's not actually all that sweet, but everything in it tastes good. Uh, the meat's really tender, the chicken's really tender. Uh, there is a lot in there, and but it's distinct. It doesn't homogenize. It's all distinct enough. There's different textures. It is a great pot of chili, so... But that's just a ju my judge. So, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to go to our little potluck thing. And we're gonna see what other people say, including hopefully people that never had chili before. They might not want to be on camera, but we'll go ahead and I'll at least get their opinion. Yeah. It smells spice. That ain't bad at all. Give it, give it some time. Keep. Oh, it's burning my mouth right now, but it's all right. That is really good. That is very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it about another fifteen seconds. <laughs> it's not. It's not that spicy for me. It's like, oh, I was expecting more of a spice. No, no, there it is. Oh. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> just basically say, like a whole bunch of pepper was just dumped in there. And I love it. Oh, it's good. But, it's, oh man, that's slid. This, <laughs> this is a good pizza. Uh, it's not completely overwhelming where it's like burning off my taste buds. But it's a good pizza. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting more. <laughs> This entire thing over yourself, you're comfortable by the time I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so f***ing good though! Needless to say, the chili was a success. Everyone seemed to enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Though, this will probably be the last episode of Sober Cooked. For one, I think video game analysis is probably my better specialty, plus cooking food is kind of expensive, so... But if you did enjoy this, remember to like, comment, subscribe, uh, go over to my Patreon, give me your money so I can actually afford to eat food and not just TV dinners. And now if you excuse me, I got a bowl of chili with my name on it. so good. Mm. Cornbread is really good too. I might have to teach you how to make cornbread. The cornbread's pretty easy. Oh gosh.